Hey guys, this is episode 7 of Noodle Time. Welcome. Here with me is uh, the remonstrating man himself, uh, Tony Rubio. Tony, say hello. Hello, everybody. Hello to uh, all pro referees out there. Thank you for making me learn a new word this week with remonstration. Yeah, um, they they whipped out the th- the sorrows for that one for sure. And apparently, apparently it was in the rule book, but I don't know about that. Hey, Tab did what he had to do, and then he threw out a five in the back on Saturday, and it just wiped everything away. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it was an interesting week for sure, especially for the dash. And yeah, yeah, we're gonna definitely gonna talk about uh, the three games from last week. Uh, before we do that, uh, we've got some other housekeeping to do. Uh, not much this week. Um, uh, just that there is no fucks in the box this week uh, because my my schedule was been has been pretty tough uh, this past week, and didn't get a chance to finish the newsletter in time. But we'll be back next week for sure. And and yeah, I was also kind of sad because a marriage um, did something weird in the Colorado game, and we'll we'll talk about it later. And that him doing that, I was uh, took a, took a toll on me pretty much. Yeah, he's just he's just helping the Dynamo get viral, bro. We're getting some worldwide coverage. I think I saw us over there on the four three three page, who has like a bajillion followers. He's just getting the Dynamo name out there. Absolutely, yep, and. And yeah, and with that, also make sure to check out my blog uh, to get all the updates and all the cool stuff at kofi.com slash dynamic foxtrot. That's uh, ko-fi.com slash dynamic foxtrot. So stay tuned to that. And with that said, let's go ahead and review the Dynamo games uh, from last week. The first one being the the one nothing big train against Kansas City on Wednesday. Um, that was a really impressive game, honestly. Um, Kansas City came in with everything they got, and and the Dynamo for some reason they managed to get the clean sheet against them. And I was expecting, I was expecting like a really um, rough win on their part, but a clean sheet against Kansas City uh, it was pretty impressive for me. I mean, it it was a rough win still. It was definitely not comfortable to finish the game by any means, you know. But it's always nice to see zeros on the score line under under our box square and. We ha- which we haven't had much of in the past couple of years, to be to be fair. Yeah, the second half was extremely stressful, uh, especially as a Dy- Dynamo fan, because for the past, I'd like to say for the past six years, um, we all know what happens uh, after the 75th minute, and it's pretty rough to be a Dynamo fan at, in the second half, uh, for the most part. And yeah, for like this game, it was pretty interesting because they, I think they made the first switch in that game. Um, they did stick with Boniak um, as a center back, um, and, and Derek Jones did start. And at first, I was kind of worried for Derek Jones, and I was hoping that he will like improve um, from like his issues with like the giveaways and stuff in and in the midfield. But uh, but thankfully, like he he was pretty much man of the match in that game. Um, Derek Jones, like I don't know what he ate for breakfast, but that that guy like killed it against Kansas City. I mean, he was pumped up like pumping up the crowd at the end he was the only other thing he could have gotten was a goal probably and that, that would have just blown the roof off of bbva but no it was a super impressive performance from him especially after a lot of criticism after his first start versus fc dallas but you know i'm, I'm glad tab has faith in him and it's definitely good good for our midfield to have more depth to have more options because we can't be trotting out 30 year old uh corona 31 year old corona we can week out because you know he needs some rest every now and then. Yeah, and yeah, and, and other players that stood out for me as well were Vera. Obviously, he, him, and like Derry Jones out there, like pretty much killed it in the midfield. And and like Tim Parker, like like I don't know if you saw Polito at all in that game, but I think he was in his back pocket literally. Um, yeah, he was like Polito was essentially shut down, which was pretty impressive considering that he like he enjoyed scoring as a Dynamo and. Like I said it last week, but yeah, I was pretty worried about him. And I mean, I was it helped that uh, it helped that Johnny Russell came out injured right away. And I mean, Daniel Shallowy and Kyrie Shelton are still, uh, you know, super tough front line to play against. So honestly, I think like I've just been thinking more and more about how amazing this Tim Parker signing has been. 
but I'm also getting more and more scared if if Tim Parker gets injured, then we're just completely screwed for the rest of the season. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh. Like we just have to, <laughs> what? like we just have to like bubble wrap him um, every single game at some point so he don't get, doesn't get injured. Like because we we all know Tim Parker is gonna start all the games. Like regardless if it's like a rotation squad or anything, he's gonna play all the games. Dude, and just I mean, no no hate to towards your uh, Vino Tinto brothers, but I'm. Um, the the when my your train has just sailed after that Colorado oh, yeah. game, I, I won't oh, get into we'll, we'll that. We'll talk too much, about but. it. We'll talk about it later. Yeah, it, that that's gonna be. Uh, we're gonna have fun talking about that one for sure. And <laughs> and yeah, yeah let's, and, but in yeah. terms of the Kansas City game, you know, just to I'll finish analyzing that. I mean, I know obviously Maxi with the goal, just in terms of what we've seen from him this season so far, and obviously with the long season ahead. What's your What's your number? How many how many goals is Maxi getting this year? What's your your over under? Uh, honestly, let me give you a number and you tell me over under. All right, twelve, twelve goals for Maxi already this year. I'd say under just so I can jinx it, and he scores more goals. But I feel like <laughs> twelve is a pretty good number um, for him. And like Tab said it a number of times, like in the in the press conferences uh, and before. Like he scored the first goal. Like he was still getting adjusted to the Dynamo system. Like we we've seen like in the past few games how he had like issues scoring and like issues in the positioning and stuff. But like I feel like the the FC Dallas game. Like I feel like he uh, that's the basically the point where I could see him like flourishing in the system. And it, we also saw it against Kansas City. And uh, and also credit to um, Derek Jones for that insane assists like it was it wasn't like flashy and everything but like i felt like that that pass um was killer and pretty much like the way derrick jones moved, moved around the midfield that game like it, it, was, it was very impressive for me and mm-hmm. like like yeah just going back to like i said derrick jones absolutely killed that game and you know there's a lot of good things to talk about there but uh, obviously we have some bad coming with the colorado game but one player that I've been a little bit disappointed in with since obviously the first week with it was a huge high, but Memo, I don't know, he's kind of been fading in these games lately. I don't know if it's taking a toll on him with the amount of minutes he's playing, but they talked about it after the first game. What he said, his you know tab and you know, a lot of other people came to back him up Beasley on Twitter, saying Memo is a, a national team quality player, which you know we've seen him at his best. He very much probably is, but. Memo himself said the biggest thing that he needs to work on is his consistency. And Tab reiterated the same thing. And maybe it's not fair that because Memo has been playing winger since Pastor has been out and it's not his preferred position, but I just haven't seen him having that impact on the game that we know he can have. What do you What do you think about Memo? Is there something going on there? Oh, yeah, I, I, I agree. Uh, I think I'm, pre- I'm pretty much aware about Memo. I feel like he, like at this point, last season like he was pretty impactful like obviously it's been way different uh, uh obviously with covid um not being much of a threat like last year and with a different schedule and and yeah like i'm like for the most part i'm, I'm worried with like how he's performing lately and and just with like a new midfield and like a new forward uh, a new forwards new mid- midfielders um i feel like we're still trying to see where he can fit best in a midfield where we have like Vera and Corona and and like Derek or, or potentially we could like swap a Derek out for Memo and like put him forward or or just like uh, rotate him in at, as one of the forwards on the wing and and yeah I'm, I'm pretty much worried for the most part it's still pretty early but at the same time it's it's a good point to start getting worried about Memo um, I mean we'll see since. I, don't, I don't know if worried is the best where you know we know he what he's capable of, but I just definitely think a winger is not his position where he needs to be in this setup because we, I mean the Dynamo is a very defensively compact team this year, uh, kind of you know park the bus if you will sometimes to to protect what we have because we're not we're not going to be putting three and four goals past teams every week I don't think this year at all, um, but I think that's why we need. It was crazy because at the beginning we're saying man we have so many wingers. And, you know, Bahamich, you know, it sucks that he had to debut in this Colorado game, but, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing more of him. But it's almost like, man, I, I, um, I almost want another another dynamic winger on this team that, that 
could just break on the counter like Fafa, Pasher. You know, we won't talk about last year right now, but uh, you know, if Yuli Yuli Yannis wants to wants to come to the Dynamo after all from from Europe, then we'll take him because just Memo doesn't have that breakthrough through speed to be dangerous on counters. Oh yeah, that uh, I still have like a giant grain of salt like, about that Lannis rumor, which I think it's it's, it's not it's, it's, it's not it's, even a thing. Yeah, like so, someone Shout made it up. I feel like, but yeah. <laughs> Shout out Dynamo Insider, whatever account that, that tweeted that out. You know, if it happens, then, then you know, cheers for you. You, you get this a lot of gift card, but if not. Yes. Yeah, and I'll follow you back if you're right, so too. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so Kansas City, definitely awesome win. I think earning us some res- more respect this season in MLS. Uh, but then, you know, moving on to Colorado, we know Tab was out because of his... Uh, I mean, a whole fiasco with the ref that that happened. If you obviously, if you guys were watching the game, uh, we'll, we'll, just a quick note: we'll, what was all that, all that about Andres with with Tab and and the linesman? Oh yeah, pretty much at the 90th minute, um, uh, Tab pretty much complained to the uh, linesman uh, for like a non call, like basically the linesman that was closest to him uh, on the sideline, and like basically because Fabio Pico got fouled, like got destroyed. And, like, like at the end of the play there and and like the referees didn't call it and tab was pretty much pissed about it and i could understand because it was like um the dying minutes and like papa is like one of the most important players uh in the forward position and and yeah like with the cost of the non-call um tab like he got out of the uh, technical a uh, box basically like the box surrounding the bench and because he did that and because he complained like in front of the, the silent referee like he was sent off like he was given a red card and essentially suspended for the game against Colorado and, and like the, the team like the players have uh, and during the press conference they did um uh recognize his essentially like his feelings like towards the game and like and like Kansas City endangering like Papa Pico and potentially endangering him but uh, thankfully nothing happened but like you could, you could like see his passion through him, and like, like they, were, like the players were th- pretty thankful for it, and and I mean, yeah, the I'm, fans I'm, I'm, yeah, like, and and the fans too, like everyone, everyone, everyone was like happy for him for showing that kind of passion, and thankfully nothing happened to Papa, Papa but like it was a kind of a setback because we we want to have tap for the Colorado game, which you know, he was, he still was probably making decisions in charge. It was just. Uh, Omid, Omid Namazi up, up there at the front of the of the box during the game, but you know Tab was still pulling the strings, pretty sure. So I mean, moving on to the Colorado game, obviously a three-one loss at, uh, away in Denver at altitude. Uh, huge change-ups in this game. I mean, obviously if you guys saw the lineup graphic, it was a uh, they put up a four-four-two, really weird, a lot of changes, but obviously the Dynamo ended up playing five-five-three. Five two three, I think. You could yes. call it. I like to three, say that. Five, two, you could you could call it five two three or five or three five two defense if we're attacking or defending. But let's be honest, we were defending the whole time. And yeah, that and, lineup pretty much saw uh, Alejandro Fuenmayor make his first uh, start and debut of this season. So Minor and and Tim Parker with him. Uh, Bizama make his first appearance of the season at right wing back. We had Darwin Seren rotate in at the center mid, uh, along with uh, Derek Jones, right? Uh, uh, Seren started, I believe. So with but, Jones? Oh no, wait, got got the wrong lineup. Sorry, <laughs> but but yeah, like it was, it was pretty much um, Derek Jones and Seren in the middle, I believe. Yeah, and then yeah. Nico Nico Lemoyne, who hadn't even been rostered yet this year, uh, starting with Ramirez and Memo up top. Uh, kind of in the front three, which also was weird because at times I saw Christian, uh, obviously the whole the whole starting 11 was dropping back behind uh, behind into our own half to defend, but it, it's almost like Christian would be on the left side at times and Memo as, as the highest the highest point in the attack, which really confused me because that's definitely not where we want to see Ramirez in my opinion, but what's, your, what's the overall opinions after this game, or about that game and after this game, how, how are you feeling, dude? Do we need to take a lot of stock in what happened? Well, I, the first point we have to take into consideration is the fact that 
because we found Bisama, like he's starting, like it, it's impressive, like our impressive feat for us and for this podcast in general. And and yeah, like jokes aside, I feel like there's things we can definitely take away from this result and like starting with this specific form- formation because starting with five in the back, it's it's I don't think it's something that Dynamo have not done in a very long time, man. And you know the last time I remember them doing this? Like mm-hmm. when we played against Colorado like two or three years ago in Colorado. I remember, I just re- vividly remember Jared Watts was still on our team. And, and I just oh. remember us throwing out this like insane five in the back formation. And we, we also got slapped that game. So I don't yeah. know why that just br- brings me back like nightmare memories about playing crazy lineups in Colorado. Yeah. And I'd say uh, there's a few things we can take away from this because obviously this is... um. Um, uh, formation that we had to like rotate players in, like so we can like rest them up because of a really busy week that they had, like busy three games essentially they had to go through. And and obviously we, we the first thing that we learned is to like never feel this formation again for now. And <laughs> and the second one being that uh, we know what happens when when we essentially like sit back and and take in those shots by Colorado because. Like I last week I did talk about like Colorado being like energetic and and pretty much Michael Barrios wiped the floor with um Lundy and and it's been like almost the case in the entire game like the Dynamo were, were getting beat and they barely responded and that their goal by Ramirez was awesome honestly but at the same time like past came out that, of nowhere yeah he came out of nowhere but past that goal like the Dynamo barely responded. Yeah, I mean, it was the Ramirez goal came out of the blue, but good for him. Really happy to see him starting. And I think he's definitely meriting of of those spot starts to, to help out a Rudy and then but also way more minutes off the bench, uh, just on regular uh, starting lineups as well, because he's definitely a threat for us in the box and outside of the box, as we can see with that shot. But uh, kind of a point that I wanted to make that's honestly, obviously, you know, in tab we trust, but it's been bothering me, honestly, since last season. You know, there's always the 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 thoughts about okay, Bizam and all these other types of guys that that have been with the Dynamo that we brought in internationally. They're using international spots. Uh, they're paying you know a decent amount of money for them, and they haven't been playing or they haven't panned out. Like, did MJ, did Matt Jordan bring these guys in? Did Tab? Why aren't they playing? And then it just kind of annoys me that when Bizama, for example, finally does play, it's always in these games where we have these weird formations. Or when it's just, it's just like we already lost the game before we even played it, kind of, you know what I mean? And oh, yes. Yeah, it's kind of like doing a disservice to them and like for them to play in a, in a formation where they can su- succeed. And obviously in these kinds of games where you have to like rotate on the road and, and yeah, it has to considering happen, us on the road, like, yeah. I don't know. I just, because it could be disingenuous because it sounds like, uh, you know, I have some stock in Bizama and maybe not some of the other guys that were thrown some criticism at, but I don't know. I just think I trust in Bizama for some reason, and I have a feeling he's going to break through, but it's just not going to happen when he plays in these types of games where we get destroyed in a weird formation, and then he's just in Tab's doghouse for the rest of the season until it happens again. So I don't know. I know Zarek just got called up to the Puerto Rican national team for a World Cup qualifier, so... I don't know if that's going to be in a, in a FIFA window or not, but if it is, you know, we can see Bizama start at right back in a regular full strength uh, lineup. So just a thought, but in terms of the three in the back, obviously we never want to see it again, but what do you think about individual performances, for example, from Juan Mayor, who I thought was one of the poor center, poor, poor players this game, Nico Lemoyne. I mean, we can't, we can't hit on them that too, too much because, you know, like we said, it's, they haven't played in a while, but, what did you see from there? Yeah, like it's it's really tough to tell, like in my opinion, and and yeah, like obviously we talked about Ramirez, um, which was one of the standouts for me, and like one of the low points essentially was like I would think about like for Mayor and and Bisama and Lemonio. essentially like the guys you just talked about, the guys that are stepping on the field for the first time this season and like getting getting acclimated with this like. A formation or like the game plan rolled out for this game was well was a nightmare for them I, i'd say and like it's really hard to tell really since um they clearly like they try their best but 
at the end of the day, they they couldn't get the result. Yeah, it's it just would have been a much better. What do you call it? It would have been a much better way to to gauge these guys if we would have played them in that same formation that that we're gonna be trotting out every game. To be fair, uh, you know, if we saw Fuen Mayor maybe just uh, paired with with Parker instead of Figue or Fuen Mayor and Figueroa, um, Lundy, you know, he's always there. We don't have a backup from currently. Bizama, it just would have been, looked a lot nicer. But Matias Vera didn't travel for this game. Hopefully, there's no injury concerns or nothing. Hopefully, it was just because he's probably been playing the most minutes out of anybody so far this season. And it was a rotation game, but uh, we'll we'll stay tuned for news on that. But just, I guess, to cap off of the Colorado game, let's talk about our boy Marco Maric. Oh, boy, yes. yes let's <laughs> talk about Maric. Like, it was, honestly, I was so freaking upset with him because he's been doing so well, like, this season for, like, past few games, and he comes, comes with this mess, and, like... It doesn't. It didn't ruin the game for the Dynamo, but at the same time, like that that goal set them back in a bit. So like, in case the Dynamo will like come back, or the game will kind of be out of, out of reach for them. And I mean, and yeah, it was like we're going into halftime with a two one instead of a two nil. It was looking like okay, we we can do something in the second half, and it just sucker punches the air out of everything. Yeah, like I used to play goalkeeper in high school. Like obviously, that's that's like getting. Getting a back pass while you're getting pressed, it's it's really tough to get rid of. Like, unless you clear it on time, like it's really uh, hard to like get rid of the forward in front of you. And obviously, I can feel that for him, but at the same time, like I was pretty upset. Like, Dude, he, come on though. I know mean, they're professionals. That they know I'll, they know what they're doing wrong, but I'll, he's <laughs> he's going across his own goal with pressure coming across your own goal, dude. Freaking boot that down the right wing where they he's already facing. Why are you turning? stumbling over the ball again you know get some new cleats yeah. if you need to some new boots because it was not the first time it happened during the game that he his the ball got like stuck to his foot and you know you gave a goal to cole bassett for free i don't yeah. know it's just it's one step forward two steps back for marco right now he's yeah i i like the guy i know he's a quality shot stopper but man just that's unacceptable because it's it's putting the team in a bad position. Basically, we already came out to lose this game, in my opinion, and that mentality with the five in the back. But then you do that, and it's game over for the boys. Yeah, um, that's my took, rant. <laughs> so, yeah, he took he took a long time to clear the ball, really, and and yeah, I just felt like he he took to, a long time to get rid of the ball, and that's what happens when you wait it out. <laughs> well. As depressing as that is, let's move on to some more depression. But this time, yes. NWSL. Oh, wait, but before we talk about it, we can talk about Darwin Quintero. Oh, yeah, sheesh. Do we want to? Yeah, yeah like, I see. You know, we, we, we got a, our our uh, our top man, Jorge Clara, from Deporte Total USA. You know, shout out to, to the guy if he's listening. The absolute not. man, yes. Uh, uh, absolutely amazing interviews if you guys haven't checked him out. Uh, on YouTube, on Twitter, with uh, you know all the big Dynamo players, with Tab, he always gets the scoop. But he sat down with Darwin Quintero for about 20, 30 minutes this past week on YouTube, and they all the only topic was Darwin, why aren't you playing? Why, what's what are you feeling? What's going to happen? And and Darwin's not happy, man. He if you guys didn't know, he didn't he was not in the 18 to go to Colorado this weekend and because in this interview with Jorge Clara, he told he said that he talked to Tab and he told Tab. Look, man, if you're not going to play me, if you don't think I'm going to improve the team, that was his quote specifically, then please don't bring me to Colorado because I'd rather stay in Houston and work on myself. Pretty much paraphrasing what he said there, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's that's some bold words. He said he's, he said it's not personal that obviously he's upset he's not playing, but uh, he said it's not personal. He respects Tab's opinion, but I don't know. It sounds a little... Sounds a little spicy. Yeah, uh, I was I wasn't able to catch the the entire interview yet, but I did read some of the of the tweets that the Border Total uh, put out regarding the 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 interview, which was pretty much like some quotes, important quotes from the interview, and it had me worried honestly because you look at Darren Quintero and you always you know that he he was the most important player for Dynamo last year, like leading 
leading the league in assists and I mean, he carried this, this team. Year. Yeah, he, he essentially carried this team last year. Um, even and even though we ended up last place in the West, and he still like did a great job carrying the team. And and yeah, you look at this interview, and obviously with Tab like getting uh, a new system in and and getting a young uh, other players in, um, like obviously coming into the season, it was getting kind of kind of worrying that to see the the Quintero situation and all, mm. also because he was like benched uh, for the for the last few games and for the last game like he wasn't barely there there and w- w- what you said being that it could it could be that pretty much because he if he wasn't going to play then he, he wouldn't travel either way and you know it's just like well, you know we're talking to Jorge and a lot of these other Dynamo media members uh, you know, shout out to them for the great opinions they were they were dishing out. But Tab has every single right. Like we're not mad at Tab, but he has every single right to to be playing his guys, to be playing his system. Because I mean, it's working out so far, whether you like it or not. It's given us some results, you know, pending to see if, if it works out long term. But you know, that's why that's why Darwin's kind of saying, you know, no, like it's not personal. I understand it's football, but he's always been the biggest guy everywhere he goes for the most part. America, Santos, Minnesota. He's enjoyed a lot of success, uh, especially, I mean, with Houston, obviously, even though we had a bad season, he's getting paid handsomely, you know, as he should, because he's uh, he's had a great career and, you know, he's 33, but, you know, he's not he's not retiring yet. He's never been in this position. He probably feels kind of pinned back to the wall. But uh, an opinion that I thought was very valid that came up was this wasn't a surprise in terms of how Tab and the team knew that they were going to play this year. Why is Darwin still here? And now maybe causing some some locker room disruption, uh, causing some kind of bad vibes. When when if they knew this is how it was going to be, why didn't they offload him before the season started? Is his is his contract too big? Did like because now it's it's kind of like Dynamo against the wall because Darwin's upset that he's probably going to leave in the summer. Teams know that we're kind of in that situation, so it's kind of their their place to win in the, in the negotiations. Don't you agree? Yeah, um, obviously Tab is in with Tab being in charge of the team. He still has to make like the tough decisions, and like I, I, and obviously like I could agree that it it was um, like tough tough decisions like this ones were going to happen. So basically, mm-hmm. like um, bringing in uh, these all these forwards and and knowing what to do with like Quintero, trying to like shift into a position where he could fit better. Like obviously it's easier said than done, but like. I kind of figured that this was going to happen with with us bring bringing in all these horses during the off season and and yeah like um uh, in one hand obviously I talked about Tab Ramos making the decisions like on the field for the team to see what's what's best for them and on the other hand you can understand why Darwin Quintero is kind of upset because he still he still wants to provide for the team coming in from like a really great uh, season last year even though we finished last but. But yeah, like it's really tough, honestly. And yeah, could, I mean, it's sorry. Go ahead. No, no, yeah. I was about to say that you could, you could um tell what his feelings were with the team and the city. Honestly, yeah, he just wants to stay stay in Houston for the long term. Like he he wants to live with his family, and it was honestly kind of sad just to see that because he he's giving a lot a lot of time and passion to this club, and and it's really it's really sad, honestly. But you can understand like tap decision at the same time, so. It's really tough. It's it's a, it's also weird because he, he's getting his world or his, he's getting the rug pulled from under him, as they say. It's just one hundred to zero real quick. A little yeah. bit. It's just uh, you know, Darwin was playing on the left wing last year, starting every single game, tied for the league leader in assists and uh, the Dynamo leading goal scorer, and now he's he's not even coming on. And and there was uh, rumblings early in the season that. Darwin wasn't fit. Darwin wasn't that. But Darwin says that he got, he got to Houston a month before preseason even started. That like he basically never left because his kids were still in school. So you know maybe he went on a little vacation, but he was here doing the work, going to those optional preseason trainings. Um, so I don't know what the truth to the rumors are about or to the comments about Darwin not being fit because he pretty much dispelled all of that in the interview, um, which definitely creates some tension in the air. But the last point I'll make about this is that Jorge asked, look, Darwin, you played, you played winger last year. You, you talked to Tab about it this year. 
you can't play there because you don't defend. You can't get back. You're that's not the kind of player you are. Okay, but why aren't you playing at the ten? Why aren't you playing at the ten when Darwin, uh, I mean when Derek Jones and Vera and Corona can be sitting behind you, and you don't have to defend. You just have to attack. And apparently he he talked he asked Tab about that and and he said no that's just not where I'm going to be playing you either. That's I need you to defend and and uh, I don't know you don't you, you don't have the stamina in you. I don't I don't know what it is there, but. It's tough, man. It's not a fun situation for anybody. At this point, you know, I wish uh, Darwin all the best. I wish he could still come in for the Dynamo and be a game changer for us. But, uh, look, I hope we find them a team in MLS, hopefully. Or I don't know where else we would go. Liga MX, possibly, for one last run. But then we need to bring somebody in to be our game changer if he goes out. Oh yeah, for sure. We'll definitely keep an eye on on the situation. Like, obviously, we'd expect them to to make moves at some point, uh, like during the summer, and to get um, to take care of the situation. And I really, really hope for the best for for Kim Darwin. And and yeah, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the Dash game. They did visit the um, Gotham City back back on Saturday. Uh, that was right uh, before the Dynamo game and and that was also like the, the season their season opener essentially so uh, coming out of the uh, challenge cup uh, they did lose one or nothing uh this game coming into this one they they knew it was going to be like a tough game uh with um a a Gotham coming in with like positive momentum coming off of um finishing second place in in the challenge cup mm-hmm. losing to Port- the Portland Thorns in the championship game and and yeah, like watching this game, um, like it's been it's been a, a pretty tough game for the Dash since it's it's been that that um, recurring issue with the Dash being uh, being um, them not finished not capitalizing of their scoring opportunities and and with that they essentially lost they only lost one or nothing like it's been it's been another another I would say like another compact defensive. Um, um, performance, but at the same time, they, they still lost to a one chance that got away, and it's really it's really disappointing in my opinion. With um, James Carson always talking about like the dash needing to finish their opportunities and 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 them like just improving defensively in general for like um, since the season started. Um, yeah, we know like the season is still early. Like obviously, this is the first game of the regular season, but. It's still one of the those things that you have, still have to take into consideration, and and yeah, you just have to finish those chances. And it's because you got they did go full strength with this one, so like every essentially everybody plays, so they had no excuse excuse to um, to not score goals, and it was just really dis- disappointing. Like you could tell with like all the players um, on the field getting all those opportunities coming in. I believe they ended with like 22 shots, and it's just honestly disappointing. They couldn't get at least a goal or some most mostly positive uh, things yeah. out of this one. I mean, yeah, it was one of those games where unfortunately it just doesn't happen for you. And I, I'll credit to, to Gotham FC that the goal they scored. Uh, sorry. I had a feeling that I needed to sneeze. <laughs> so just talking about Gotham makes me, makes me want to sneeze. But no, Midge purse with an amazing goal there and down the wing to, to give them the lead, uh, which is honestly, if you haven't seen the goal, go watch it. She had some really nice footwork there. Slots it past James Campbell. But, uh, I mean, there's some positives. Uh, I, li- I like the way we play. I like Christy Mewis is an absolute danger. And it was so unlucky that her and Rachel Daly couldn't link up there a couple of times, a couple of crosses that, that came pretty close. But it's definitely not the way you want to be starting your season, especially while we have, you know, our grade A starters here for the time being before they go off to Olympics. So... I don't know. What do you, what do you take from that? Is it something to to mule on that long, or is it just something we need to bounce back from? I mean, they can definitely um, get some um, get some takeaways out of this result. I would say we we've seen how how offense can still be productive, but at the same time we can still like take a few things in for for defense. Um, we like we we still like. One of the positives I will have to say is that we still we don't concede that many goals. Um, so like essentially I mean, after conceding, conceding the first one, like the dash do 
essentially either adapt to the game or just stay compact. And I feel like that's one of the positives for the Dash uh, for the past um, since, since the start of the Challenge Cup. And they they're still pretty resilient. And it's just that the, their main issue being um, um, their how they capitalize essentially, and they get all these opportunities, but they still have to get that ball in the back of the net. Yeah, I don't know. It's it almost makes me feel like, I mean, I don't want to like think too far ahead in the future already, but I feel like the Dash c- could use a reinforcement or two in this team that's already an amazing one of the I think top three teams in WSL personally, but it, like almost like just a ruthless goal scorer up top. I mean, I know we have some pretty good pieces already, but. I think that could really benefit this team. Yeah, there's been a long talks about players coming from Liga MX Femenil to to the Dash, but I'd really like to see that come to fruition this summer and maybe see a couple of reinforcements, especially once our players go to the Olympics to 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 shore up to shore up the front line because I think we're having trouble scoring goals um, when those people are gone and even and these tough games against Gotham against the Thorns, it's it's a battle to to even put one past them. Yeah, obviously it's still early in the season, so we don't we don't have to get like that worried. But yeah, it's still a few things to, to to consider moving forward. Yeah, I mean, basically this is our one loss the whole season, and and now it's just straight dubs the rest of the way there. Pretty much, yeah. I just a minor setback, I'd say, but yeah. I um, think James. I think James Clarkson. I think the good thing is he he knows where the problems are. I mean, that's why he was so disappointed after the game to come away with that result. I mean, no one's going to be happy, but he knows what this team is capable of. So, I think... Oh, yeah, oh, yeah for sure. We don't want to hang our heads for this one. I think I think they'll bounce back fine. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then we just have to take advantage of um, of as many games as they have all the starters in, you know, and they just have to get all those, all those positive results. And speaking of having all the starters in, um, we can definitely go ahead and transition to uh, this weekend's games. Um, both the Dynamo and Dash do play this weekend. Um, the Dynamo play first. Uh, they host the Whitecaps on Saturday. Yes, and the, the Dash uh, host the Kansas City and WSL on Sunday. And let's go ahead and talk about the Dynamo game coming up. The Whitecaps, um, they're in a rough shape right now. They it's a, we- it's a weird team, man. It is. It's, um, it's a weird team. Um, they... I like to call them wild card because they have they have like a a pretty um they have a, like a, they, have, they have good players I'd say but they do have like the setback of of not playing in Canada with the pandemic and they can yeah. play they can play at home in Vancouver so they have to like play I believe they're currently um their home is in uh, Russell Lake Salt Stadiums Lake. yeah 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 their stadium and which essentially it's um I'd say it's a disadvantage for them. Because they they can play in front of their own fans and they essentially have no atmosphere and they did beat um Portland I believe like whenever they hosted them or what yeah they yeah. did beat them yeah, yeah. and um, they beat Portland and and uh, and they beat Montreal who started the season off pretty hot but it's weird like I mean you know me and I know you as well I'm a huge MLS junkie fanboy I know so much about so many of the teams apart from the Dynamo, but uh, Vancouver and along with just randomly Chicago are two of the rosters that I know the least about in this league because I think they've brought in so many foreign players. I don't know if that's just me, if you kind of agree with them, but I don't have as much insight in terms of the players that they've had this year, like Christian Dahomey, Big Kill in the, in the midfield, Kai Alexandra. Like, I have no idea where the heck these guys came from. So, you know, I need to see them a little bit more, but... I think Vancouver's kind of one of those teams that you don't know who's going to show up. You don't know if Cavallini's going to be, you know, Liga MX Cavallini's going to be there scoring a hat trick or they're going to lay a stinker and and have nothing on the board. But um, some players that definitely are ones to watch out for for Vancouver, like I said already, Lucas Cavallini, Canadian national teamer, Christian Dahomey, who they brought in this, uh, this winter, I believe, right? From, I don't know, last year, since last year. He's always a, a threat up top from Colombia. I mean, who else are you looking at for this game from, from Vancouver to watch out for? Oh, yeah, I'd say both of them. And I'll also say um, every, I would say the fullbacks that, that Vancouver are going to play and, and Diego Gutierrez, because I feel like that's a, 
a position they can capitalize on against the Dynamo. And we've seen that against uh, Colorado. Obviously, they're going to adjust the formation for this one, the Dynamo are, but that's um, Gutierrez already has a few assists with, with Vancouver, so he's definitely one to watch since he gets to, he enjoys going forward. It's pretty interesting because he, he came from the same team as Jose Bizama from, let me, I don't want to butcher it, Huachipato in the Chilean Huachipato. first division. Uh, I love so that name. Gutierrez is, is Chilean Canadian, but now he represents the Canadian national team left back. And I, I don't know if it, if I I remember back in the day when we were interested in Bizama. I don't remember if, if the Dynamo at one point were maybe interested in Christian Gutierrez as well. Um, honestly, no way to confirm that. Just crazy Twitter rumors back in the day. But obviously, he ended up in Vancouver, being Canadian, and um, yeah, he's he's been pretty solid for them ever since he got there. Kind of, uh, especially since Ali Adnan has been out of out of uh, you know Vancouver's DP left back has not been able to come back to the United States because of visa issues. But uh, you're definitely right on that. We have to watch out for him. Hopefully, Zarek's up for the task because after Sam Vines just destroyed our <laughs> our right side of the of the defense this past game. Yeah, and this is a game they have to win. Um, the Dynamo can sure. the Dynamo can either easily win this game or. Or do what they do best, um, which is the dis- disappoint us in a way. But yeah, they they have to win this game. They have. I mean, to coming out of the result against Colorado. Because because look at this. If if Houston lose this game, this could really snowball into be- some bad a bad run of form. Because uh, after Van- after we host Vancouver next week, we we're going away to Kansas City, which by no means is easy. We are going away to LAFC, who even though they're in bad form, you know Carlos Vela is coming back. Never, we never do well on the road, in, especially in California. Then we host Portland, uh, and we go away to Salt Lake. So until then, it seems like uh, the next five games are gonna be a handful, you know. Yeah. So yeah, they have to win but this game. If they don't, I'll be really sad. <laughs> big, big question is: Is Tyler Pasher back for this game? They, they say he's back in training, but he did not feature at all on the bench this week. I have a feeling he's going to be back. I think they were trying to really rest him up and get him good. I think we'll at least see him on the bench. Yeah, I feel like he, I feel like he's going to make an appearance um, either at bench or starting this weekend. I also feel like there's a good chance we can see even Junko in bench. I, I really hope we see Junko like in bench because he's he's one of the players that impressed me the most and one of the um, one of the reinforcements we need in the back. And like he also because he can play fullback well based on mm-hmm. last year. Yeah. I'm confused. I'm confused honestly though there because uh, the only players listed on the injury report now are Bartlow and and Pasher. But from what I've heard, Bartlow is finally back in training, even though he still obviously needs to get fit and get past his concussion. But even though Junkwan isn't in, isn't on there, I believe in the in the press conference last week, Tab said Junkwan still has a way to go in terms of his concussion that he's dealing with. So. Maybe we're not getting the most clarity there, but uh, obviously Vancouver's a must-win. We know that. I think the Dynamo could do themselves some some huge uh, confidence boost, some some huge good for themselves if we put three past Vancouver this week. There's no reason we shouldn't. We've been missing a lot of chances. I think the Dynamo need to pick me up. They need three points. They need a blowout, and I think the fans want to see it too. So. Uh, What's your prediction this week? It's, this this never goes well, but what, what are you saying? Don't give me a score. Just tell me who scores for that animal. Okay, so I'm going to say Pico Brace and, and Tim Parker. Sheesh. Yes. I'm playing it safe. <laughs> Bold, bro. I think... Um, I won't even give you a score, dude. I'm just going to give you one person that's going to score. I yeah. think Joe, Cor- Joe Corona gets his first goal in orange nice. th- this week. That's that's all I'm going for. <laughs> I don't know if we win. I don't know if we lose. I'm not, I'm not jinxing this, but uh, my, my boy Joe, Joey Corona, he's going to get a goal. I feel it. Yeah, I just hope Tim Parker scores because he almost scored against a Kansas City. Dude, he's that's a threat nice. off yeah. those corners. Yeah. But yeah. Let's, see, let's see what happens here. We'll see if... Yeah, the Darwin Quintero saga keeps happening, but um, you know, looking forward towards the season, I really think the Dynamo need to sign a left back. Uh, I don't think I, I like Sam Junko. I think he's going to be on the team long term in terms of being depth, and you know, who knows, maybe one day proving himself and winning a starting spot. 
but I don't think left back is his position. Uh, I, and from what we saw last year, Tab was playing him at center mid instead of freaking left back. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> honestly, I, I honestly I have no idea who they could bring in. I would much prefer us to bring in a backup left back from within MLS because you know, we've seen Matt Jordan scout and <laughs> bringing in some guys that haven't exactly panned out. So I'd rather go with a safe bet and bring in a left back veteran in MLS to back up Lundy. Oh yeah, for sure. Like I'll I'll def I'm definitely a bet for MLS experience. Um, obviously with uh, beating all kinds of experience out there. Like even though. If, even if you're the best, like I'll, I'll definitely prefer league experience over er- everything. And yeah, and yeah, and with that, let's go ahead and talk about the dash game coming up. They do host Kansas City and WSL on Sunday, and there's also another winnable game for the dash. Um, they, they, they need a positive result coming out of the loss against um, Gotham FC, and Kansas City, um, they already played, I'd say, five games. Uh, since the season started, uh, counting the, the Challenge Cup, uh, and they haven't won. And there's, there's another winnable game for the Dash. They can, like, bounce back um, in the standings. And obviously, with the season just starting, uh, they could use this result. And, and yeah, like, they did the last game, their their first game of the season was against a Louisville City, and they still haven't held a scoreless. I'd say it's a pretty interesting feat, considering... Um, Louisville City is an expansion franchise, and they, they they've got their momentum in favor of them, and and yeah, like they, they did manage to like hold them scoreless, and one of the threats I'd say is, uh, is Amy Rodriguez. Um, yeah, at, le- at least the only threat Legends. I can see. Uh, yeah, yeah, from <laughs> the from the thing. replays I've seen, and and yeah, like she she can definitely uh, put some goals past the dash, but like obviously with this new defense coming in uh, with. Uh, defense like the dash to de- develop uh, for this year um, it's going to make uh, her life hard and like I said it's one of those games that the dash uh, can win easily and I, I just hope they don't disappoint me like like what they did against Gotham I think I'm going to put a prediction on this I think the dash win this game 4-0 thank uh, um, Rachel around, Rachel um, Daly hat trick I'm, I'm saying it and Christy Mewis with the other goals. I'm, I'm putting that into existence out into the world. But Kansas City, I guess also you could call them an expansion team, even though they were here before. But uh, definitely lacking some star power on that team. But, I mean, we know in NWSL anything can happen on any day. They still have, you know, legend Nicole Barnhart back to her and goal, uh, getting up there in age. But, you know, still an amazing uh keeper in the WSL and then, you know also USWNT legend Amy Rodriguez up up top which can always bag a goal on any day of the week so it's tough yeah it's going to be that um up to the dash obviously uh, uh, we've we've seen it like i just said it like going in the last few games um they can be um really defensive uh, about the result um they can they can efficiently sit back and just create like a compact scenario for uh the the other teams to not score essentially and um, which I, i've seen i've seen the replays and everything and they do a pretty good job and i just hope like they keep it up but um going back to what i said um reviewing the gotham game uh they need to finish those chances and that's the only thing i'm worried about for sure but for 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 no win for the dash if that comes true, I expect my Salada gift card in the mail the next day, please. Yes, Rachel Daly Hattrick, please. <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah. To finish to finish off the episode there, I wanted to, uh, to bring up one last thing. Damn which alone, I think we need, to, we, we need to make a little jingle, a little a little sound for this, like a ding ding ding. Dino Load Army updates, which this week we actually have an update. <laughs> Whatever the heck that was. <laughs> One of those, the, the little fox noise that he posts after we win. <laughs> yes. Uh, Dynamo Lone Army update. Marcelo Palomino starting for Charlotte Independence against Eric McHugh's Charleston Battery in what I saw at USL called the Southern Derby, which is very much not that Southern. But <laughs> uh, Palomino scored his first goal for Charlotte Independence, uh, I believe, in, around the eighth minute. He, uh, Charlotte. 
Charlotte won three nil. I yeah, believe I, I wore. Uh, they were on the road too, and they wiped the floor on Char- with Charleston yeah. Battery, which was it's like their first first time they beat Charleston, uh, apparently. So that's a huge deal. Marcelo played around seventy something minutes. I, I pretty much watched it up until Marcelo uh, got subbed out, and then like the game was being yes. <laughs> I mean, Eric, but uh, Eric McHugh got subbed in towards the end of the Charleston game. He played around 30, 20 minutes uh, at right back, actually, which I've never seen him there before. But honestly, it looks like the battery are kind of hurting right now. They have, they did not have a full bench. Uh, yeah. Not a, they only have like two injuries. So honestly, that's kind of weird. They don't have the biggest roster so far. And from what the announcer said, they're missing some people. So I think we could very much see Eric McHugh get some minutes this year in Charleston, some big minutes. Because he himself was coming off injury, according to the announcers. But uh, I hope it doesn't get ugly over there in Charleston if they don't fill up that roster and get some more quality in. Because it won't be the best if, if Eric's playing, but he's getting getting three or four putbacks past him every week. But uh, nah, I think it's definitely promising. He, he looked really nice there out, out, at fullback. Uh, so wherever he's playing on the, on the field, I'm happy that he's coming on. I'm sure he will, will get that starting position with Charleston throughout the year. And Marcelo... You know, starting, I think, only in his second game for Charlotte. Uh, he looked, I mean, he obviously had the goal, which was a free kick um, that came off the crossbar, and Marcelo was just there to, to pounce on the rebound, which, hey, you know, is, it's still a goal is a goal. Don't, don't hate the player, hate the game, bro. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, he, he was he was kind of playing, um, I believe Charleston, I mean, uh, Charlotte was kind of playing like a 4-2-3-1 kind of thing. So he wasn't exactly playing winger. He wasn't super wide, but he was imagine it as the as a wide uh, center attacking midfielder. The over there on the right, he would kind of float inside. He picked some some pretty nice passes for for his strike partner Irving Para, and um, it's looking up the, the Dynamo Lone Army. It's 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 uh, it's going to the moon. Oh yeah, for sure. It's only two players, but we'll get that number up at some point. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, any. Any last thoughts this week on the Dash and Dynamo Andres? Uh, no, well, uh, just that uh, um, in marriage, do better. And, yeah, don't play out of the back again, I guess. <laughs> and At least for now. <laughs> and uh, we just got to shout out Webb Tilton because he he was salty that we didn't say his name in the last podcast for the first time. So if you're actually a real fan, Webb, you would have listened to the very end of this podcast and hear your name. So yes. Shout out Webb. Absolutely. But yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in to this uh, chunky episode. Um, yeah, hopefully we don't have like three games in like, yeah, in, in a week. And and yeah, it, it's been a fun episode, especially talking about the Dash and the Dynamo. And yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode. Um, uh, you guys are awesome. Keep listening. I keep sharing the show. And, and yeah, stay noodle. <laughs>